Welcome to GameSpot's coverage of E3 2018. I'm Callie, and I'm here with Hess Barber and Adam Orth from First Contact Entertainment. You're the CEO, you're the creative strategist, and we're talking about Firewall Zero Hour, a 4v4 tactical VR shooter. That's a lot of mouthful. things going on. It's a lot, a lot of stuff. I managed to get it all done, though. It's very hard to say all that. <laughs> all that at once. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot going on, and that's actually one of my first questions is, is how do you approach making something that's, you know, it, you guys say it's a, a realistic, with lifelike animations kind of shooter, real heavy tactical focus. How do you m marry that with VR? Uh, well, um, we have a really, um, we have a lot of history uh, and our, on our team making VR. And we actually um, set out to kind of solve a couple problems in VR that, not problems, but like trying to figure out some stuff that people have trouble in VR. And, and we also wanted to make this type of game because that's the kind of games we like. And we there seemed to be a big hole in the marketplace where that didn't exist. Um, so... We kind of tackled uh, movement because movement is a big thing in, in first-person shooters in VR, and a lot of people have had problems with it. And so we thought right away, you know, if we want to make this game, we've got to solve that problem, at least in the context of our game. And um, we knew because it's going to be a multiplayer shooter that you can't do the kind of traditional VR movement of, like, teleporting because I shot you and you're not there now. And that's not very fair. So um, that was the first thing. And, and we made a prototype really quick. Um, and the thing that we weren't really counting on was the feeling of doing something together in VR with other people. And that very quickly we realized that we could really make this kind of game. And once, once we had that prototype kind of nailed down, it all really just kind of came together and... Uh, we're really proud of, of the way it kind of turned out. It's really fun. Um, it's very comfortable VR, and uh, it's been awesome working with, with PlayStation making the game. Mm -hmm. As far as comfort goes, I mean, I'm one of those people that can get motion sick pretty easily, and I think the teleport movement is one of those common solutions. What was your alternative solution to help a little bit with that? Um, so we use uh, a multitude of different things to, to pull that off so as Adam said we it just wouldn't work having teleporting right so we knew we couldn't do it um, we played a bunch of other VR games that had movement in it and, and felt weird pretty quickly didn't feel right so we noticed you know there's a few things people are doing like vignettes um, that's one small part of it which does help with movement but it's really linked to what your brain is expecting you to feel like when you move and that is that's really the heart of where it's at so having really 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 good programmers that know how to code to just match that exactly spot on is what really limits it so we did experiments with um all kinds of crazy demos of high speed things um web slinging that kind of stuff to see well, what can we do how are we going to make ourselves the sickest and we did those but we programmed it in a way that you would expect to feel that motion and we found we weren't feeling sick we weren't getting that feeling at all so like okay we've we've got that and then we put that into the game it's fairly slow game you're not sprinting around it's not twitch gameplay uh it's very strategic it's terrifying the immersion of vr being in there and it's scary right bullets are hitting around you and it's not just like you're looking at a screen going oh yeah I've got to be careful not to get hit. You literally, your brain's going, shit, you're getting shot at. <laughs> so it, everything comes together, like the slow pace, uh, the, the code, the vignette, all these things, ingredients kind of come together and the short times as well. So, that, so the, the round is like around five minutes. Um, and then you stabilize again, you're back in a lobby. So there's many things that happen uh, and it just lets you play for a long, long time. Yeah, there's a lot of science yeah. In it, we we take what we do in VR very seriously because, you know, not everyone in the world is going to be able to play VR. It's just I, I can't go anywhere with my wife if she's not driving because she gets car sick in any seat in the car. Yet, right. she's okay in this game, so I think we're doing something, something good. 
That's a pretty uh, good selling point if you're. I think so. Someone very, very emotions that can handle your We're game. We're gonna put it on the box. <laughs> it's gonna be pretty sweet. Uh, so I guess going into the the tactical elements, there's not really. I mean, there's VR shooters, right? But there's not really anything quite like this in VR. How did you guys go about approaching um, the more you know realistic tactical kind of feel? Well, I think I think number one, it's it's something that everyone at the studio really wants to do and really believes in doing and we've all played those games um you know some of my most memorable multiplayer experiences have been old school rainbow six and like really kind of memorable stuff where you're working together and you're using the tools that you're given to you know create your own water cooler moments and we have a we take a lot of care in in the weapons and the equipment and com managing that into the tactical gameplay like we, the, kind of the, some of the stuff we're watching now um you know it's it all comes into this package so for example um when you get when you're killed in this game that's it there's no there's no responding but you're still able to live on uh in this thing called the support feed which is you can scroll through multiple cameras through the environment and you can actually still help your team uh be successful by saying oh the enemy's over here this is your next objective and it's it's all those little things uh, a player goes down when you're shot you go down and you have a timer that is depleting and if you you your teammates can revive you in that moment but it's a really you have to make these moment to moment micro decisions like is it too dangerous to go over there am i going to get shot or if you're the other team downing someone and not killing them and leaving them as bait for their other teammates. So we really took a lot of time to make sure that all of the game mechanics and systems and equipment all fit into this kind of cycle of tactical gameplay. So it sounds like death is kind of its own an element of strategy in itself, which is, I don't think, very common. I, I play a lot of shooters and... and Dying isn't necessarily something you're you're thinking about first and foremost, or even should I kill the other player? But it's not right. like that's like kind of a big element. Yeah, it's like um, we learned pretty early on that when we placed all these cameras in every environment, and then you could cycle through them, like it's almost fun to die. Like I actually really like helping my team after I've died. I usually play a scout or support type character, and I'm always getting killed early. He'll tell you. I get killed a lot. So and <laughs> But I really enjoy the fact that I can lead my team around. And also, like, we can do stuff like the mines that you place in the game live on after you don't. So you can still get a kill in when you're not actually in the game. So it's like all those little things make this really compelling package and we've set the rounds like Hess said to about five minutes and they very rarely go for five minutes it's four on four um, and it's just a really kind of tense impactful thing and when you throw in VR the immersion factor there is just like the stakes feel so high every bullet every footstep every little communication every interaction with your team it just feels I don't want to use the word important because that's a horrible way to describe something but it, it's <laughs> what you do is important in the game and um, yeah, everyone like the communication it's right. all all about that communication um, like Adam's saying going from camera to camera kind of helping your team and then your team being in there communicating so what we found is for the first time ever people have a microphone attached to their face as well as you know through HMD which it's not usually like that you, you, you have to go out of your way and get a headset with a mic and all that, and it's more of a kind of a hardcore thing. But everyone with a PSVR has this microphone in it, so it, we kind of we want to break the barrier of people just playing by themselves and not communicating or talking and just sitting back and running off and getting killed. So they'll, you'll soon learn. You'll do that the first time you play, and you'll be like, damn, that, that didn't work out so well. Uh, so you try it again, and it's... It, it's, it's that social barrier and you're only talking to three other people in your team it's not like dozens of people or anything so once you get kind of used to that and you start helping each other then very quickly you see people just very naturally just talking to each other and you'll see that team they'll just start winning very quickly the team that communicates wins every time 
and it's when you talk about the immersion like I have this great story about when we were making the game we were still very early on in the game and um, you know people forget that when you're when you're playing in VR like the the things that you do in the real world translate one to one into the game and we were doing a play test and this guy had who loves these type of games came in he's not a big VR person and we put him in the game and he was with his squad and he was in a uh, in a firefight where he was shooting up across like an atrium and they were they were upstairs and he was like shooting through a window and it was so intense that his hands in real life were shaking and that translated into the game and he couldn't get the shot because of the intensity of that and it's like once i saw that like i knew we were doing something special because you just cannot have that you cannot have the the physiology of your body affect when you're playing just a regular 2d regular like they're regular but you know a regular first person shooter that's not in vr so when you do things like you know it's it sounds so simple but this is really a big deal if hess and i are playing and he's walk going down a hallway and i'm covering him we can move straight with our controller but also turn our head to look down a hallway and see if someone's down there and not come off course and that's like it seems so small but that's a really big um kind of addition to how we play first person shooters um so speaking of that your hands shaking as you're playing uh this game is aim controller compatible and uh I guess, I mean, like from what you're saying, it sounds like it's pretty accessible if you're not familiar with VR, pretty accessible even if you're not really a big tactical shooter player, but that there's a lot of depth to the tactics and one of those things would be weapons. And I was wondering, you know, is the aim controller maybe more suited towards one type of weapon over another? Like I I feel like maybe a shotgun would be a very different feel from, you it's, know. It's cool to use the aim controller. It makes the, it makes the experience feel different, but um, it's the exact same experience when you're using a DS4. Yeah. Um, there's more DS4s out there, so that's just the way it is. But it's when you pick up the aim controller, it is a very sp special, different type of experience. Um, but we tuned everything appropriately, so there's you don't have an advantage in-game with one or the other. But it's pretty cool to take that thing and, you know, from behind cover and, you know, blind fire like that. It's just new cool things that you can't really do in other games. Yeah, and, and we've done a lot of cool stuff with the weapons too, so uh, I don't know if some of this footage might show it, but if you go around a corner and the gun act, it, uh, interacts physically with the world as well, so if you're going around a corner, you need, you need to lift the gun up as you would in real life to get around the corner, otherwise it's going to hit it and it will you'll hear it bang on the wall and, and scrape on the wall and kind of get in the way, so you have to be aware of what you're doing physically in the game as well, which is, it's it's pretty cool. But yeah, Adam said everything's pretty balanced. Um, and one thing that's interesting in here, so you can switch to a hand uh, pistol as well. And if you're holding the aim, you know, your hands, your hands aren't switching to a pistol, right, in real life. So, so we thought, how's this gonna feel when we switch to a pistol? And then the grip is obviously like this. Um, and it, it your brain just instantly connects and it just feels like you're you're holding a pistol even though your hands are apart there's lots of really cool tricks that happen with your brain in vr to to real life so you can you can push the boundaries of that which is really cool and that's no one's figured that stuff out before so we're kind of like figuring out as we go and and you, when we go too far we're like okay that didn't work and i'll pull it back so but it is it to, to answer another part of your question it, it is a game for everyone like you can Definitely. just have never played VR or a shooter before and pick this up and it feels good and you can be, you know, matchmaking will place you in the appropriate group of people or you can play it by yourself against AI. Um, but it also is deep enough that a hardcore skilled gamer is going to have a really fun time with it too. So Right. We have full progression trees that you level up and unlock different things. Uh, different accessories and items and skins and weapons and things. Right, that was actually my next question is about the customization because yeah. there's 12 um, contractors is what they're called, right? Uh, and it sounds like they work sort of like classes but with that flexibility of customization. Yeah, it's not, it's not necessarily class-based. It's more like um, 
each each character has an assigned skill that always goes with them. And there's another slot where you can kind of customize that and bring another one in. So, like, you know, there is a reason to pick a character. It's not just a generic guy that you fill up a slot and one by one. So um, we tried to really balance those um, with the type of game this is, which is, again, this is not a run-and-gun game. If you run and gun in this game, you will not be successful. It's just not that kind of thing and um so so picking your picking your contractor is really important and what we've also done is we have a really interactive um lobby where you actually see your character and move your character and a lot of the information that's usually conveyed through text in a menu is actually conveyed visually on your character um and we've removed the other team from the lobby so you can't hear them speaking and it's really a fun moment before the game starts when you're saying okay I, we know what map this is and we know what characters we have so we need to pick the appropriate loadouts to it's really a fun moment of strategy that again is is enhanced in a new way through vr right um, I think we got to wrap up pretty soon, but um, before Adam, you were mentioning how this is—you've been to every E3 that's ever happened. It's Ninety-three years. Old. <laughs> pretty much, I am ninety-three years old. <laughs> um, but I look really good. I look young you still. You do look really yeah. young. So congratulations on that. It's moisturizing that really does the trick. D- moisturizing is very important. It's very right? important. Just a shout out to moisturizing yes. really quick. But um, you—you you also mentioned Rainbow Six. Um, the thing I. I'm really curious about is like, is there a single thing that really inspired Firewall Zero Hour, or or maybe like besides seeing other VR games, what's a big inspiration for you guys? Uh, f- for me, the team, yeah, right. Well, yeah, but like, for me personally, I just want to do stuff with other people in VR, and that it, unless you've experienced it on your own it's almost impossible to to explain but i had a very early demo um of oculus hardware a bunch of years ago where i stood in a room by myself and someone else was in a different room and we were in the same room virtually and they threw a ball to me and i caught it and it was just the simplest thing but the coolest thing ever so i really wanted to make a game where i was doing stuff with other people no matter what it was and then the the studio that the, our team is an amazing team that has amazing first person shooter experience so it's pretty obvious what we had to do yeah the team's come from you know many years of different call of duty titles and and lots Halo, of, lots of overwatch right. medal of honor so we knew that All right we knew what to do we were we were messing around in vr doing some other things we did a little game called rom extraction as well um and then we just we knew we're like, man, someone's gonna do the the first person shooter one day. It's gonna be amazing. Can you imagine it? And we're like, oh wait, it should be us. Like, what do we, we got all the skills? Why don't we do that? Um, so then we set out and we made this game in a year, which is the other thing which we, we really think, a year. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, are you guys okay? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> our no. team is very. T- we're <laughs> also at the end of the development yeah. process right now, so we're. At E3, demoing and finishing the game. Last couple of weeks. That's incredible! Congratulations on a year of development. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know if that's something to congratulate someone on yet. We'll see. Godspeed. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Yeah. Thank. Rest you. in peace, maybe. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for coming. Hess Barber and Adam Orth from First Contact Entertainment for Firewall Zero Hour. Really appreciate you guys taking the time. Thanks um, for having me. Thank you. For more on E3 2018, we have so much coverage up on GameSpot already, so keep checking back to the site for all the news, trailers, gameplay, and more. We'll see you next time. Bye.